Hello everyone, we are live yet again and this is going to be one of my author's chats of the week. And so, as always, I'll be keeping my eye out for my co-host who should be joining me momentarily. It always just takes a couple minutes for all the notifications to be sent out and then we'll get going real soon. And let me see if I can send an invite. Do, do, do. But we'll be uh, talking about books, writing, publishing, and everything in between. And if you have any questions for us, feel free to post them and message them to us, and we'll try to answer them to the best of our abilities. And we'll go from there. I see. Hello, hello. It's been a kind of a quick turnaround since I had a live on Friday. So it kind of, I felt like it almost was like two in a week, but just the way everything fell accordingly and I'll keep an eye out to see if I'm able to invite him yet. There we are. It always takes him one on my end. I don't know why. Maybe it's my service. We'll see if he sees the invite and we'll get going. And tomorrow is going to be a fun day for me because that will be a book release day. So I might join just on a solo live at that point. And uh, But yeah, so we'll have a new novella release. So it'll be the 14th novella for the Guardian Speaker series. And that is my Viking fantasy, Viking dark fantasy uh, for adults. Hello. <laughs> am, I, am I here? <laughs> I can hear you. I cannot see you. But I don't know. I think almost all the time it automatically puts like that little uh, icon up there. So gotcha. I don't <laughs> Hopefully. I'm not sure what, what do I need to push. <laughs> I've never figured this out and my if my ring light continues to I know I have to get a new one. It's gonna flicker. If it flickers too much, then I'll Hold just turn I think I think I might have figured it out. Aha! <laughs> Yay! It's always nice to see the face of the one I'm talking to. Doesn't always happen, but it's always nice. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic fantastic how are you today i'm good and how about yourself it's been a long time since we've done one of these it <laughs> but, uh, but yeah i mean i i try to like think back i was like it's been i think almost like over a year since you and i talked last it's been almost two years because that's when my book released so. <laughs> time flies that's why i I like I started I was I try to be you know aware of who I've talked to and you know not trying to book someone too close together but then every so often you're like man has it really been that long? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been it's been a while it's been a while but you know <laughs> well, for it's me, always good to catch up. <laughs> yes, and for everybody who's new and may not know who you are, why don't you reintroduce yourself and what you write and we'll go from there. And I love your sat squatch behind you. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. So I am Neil Romrell. Um, I have a, a debut novel. My fa uh, debut novel is an urban fantasy uh, titled Psych Alpha. Um, it actually came out in June of uh, 2022. Uh, it focuses on um, a society that protects uh, cryptid creatures. So you'll see my Bigfoot or my Mothman tie here, as it were, um, that basically keep them safe from not only each other, but from us human beings, because you know us, us human beings are problematic sometimes. And uh, since uh, publishing my debut novel, I've actually had a few short stories published. Um, I've joined a big writers group, um, and I've written a fantasy novel. But it is not yet; it's not ready yet. And I just literally started reaching out to get artwork and stuff like that worked up for it for cover and whatnot. So, um, so been doing a lot of things. <laughs> just. Uh... <laughs> No, I can say. Oh, uh, so what was what was the reason to switch between you know your cryptid based um, story and now this new fantasy? Unless are they related in any way? I'm assuming they're, they're not related technically. So um, when I had finished Site Alpha, there's a no, there's a whole lot of story here. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, when I finished Side Alpha, I originally hadn't planned on querying it, but the first editor that I turned it into was like, oh, you should definitely like at least get this out in front of people. Yeah. And um, so in doing so, I, I was actually with an indie publisher. I had, I had had an indie publisher that picked up the book for a while. That indie publisher ended up going out of business. But in the meantime, I was like, well, I need something to do while I'm waiting around for my book to be published. And so I started writing a fantasy novel. I love Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I've, I've played it for 
basically all my life. And uh, I was I was looking to tell a tale about some, basically they're, they're based on characters of kind of my original Dungeons and Dragons group. And uh, I wanted it to kind of be from the perspective of, and I'm sorry, I've got, I need to turn off my notifications real quick. Um, I kind of wanted it to be, to be from the perspective of like where they started from, right? Because a lot of times when we join up with like uh, people in books or, or you know characters in books or whatever, they're either kind of maybe already established or they're or they're kind of there a little bit, you know. Maybe they're they're just learning the ropes, but but this is literally kind of like how they became what they became, right? Like why is the rogue capable of opening locks and doing things Ooh. like that? You know, why does the why does the the priest worship the the particular deity that they do and things like that? And so. That was kind of my idea, and uh, and so I got that book put together, but then it kind of sat on the shelf. And I, I am working, actually, on Side Alpha's sequel. It's just kind of a long process. <laughs> I, I understand long processes, so it's fine. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and that was that was the big. Sorry, I'm turning off my notification now. But um, that was that was kind of the big thing. And and the other the other thing about it was is that. I I really when I set out to write Side Alpha, it, I had tried to write other books in the past, right? I had tried to write fantasy. I had tried to write, I wouldn't call it horror, but something kind of like paranormal, maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, but but fantasy was kind of always my first love. Like you know, growing up, it was Terry Brooks and Robert Jordan and yeah. you know Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman and people like that that I was always reading. And so I I still wanted to do that at some level and seeing that I could actually write a book and quote unquote get it out there kind of told me okay well maybe I should actually give this another stab and and luckily this time it paid off so I love that. and I think uh, the D and D style um literature is growing in popularity and maybe it's you know something from offshoot of stranger things and this whole reboot and re-awareness re of D and D. I mean it's never going away but yeah. it's definitely <laughs> seeming to build more and more and so it's a good time to publish something like that I know I have a future book series that's kind of D and D meets Witcher meets you know kind of the darker side of things that will be a lot of fun to get into and start writing in the near future but I mean, the world building process and that can be that can take a little while but i love that i love that for you and uh i'm assuming since you're starting to look into the artwork maybe cover design are you trying to release like early next year do you have any game plan yet for your book it sounds like you're done writing it yes yes so um it is it is done i'm i'm kind of gone through the first pass of edits my my actual my my kind of editor that is my true true editor uh just started college back so um so she won't be able to to really get a really good dig in on it until get a little bit closer to thanksgiving but i've kind of been doing my first passes and i think i've got a few people that have enjoyed some of my short stories and some of my other writing in my writer group that are going to kind of alpha read it for me a little bit and just make sure that it's not too out there like i i feel like when i read it it's like oh it makes perfect sense to me but then i go well i'm the one that wrote it so <laughs> there is that it's nice to have someone be like yeah you need to explain this because your readership doesn't know what you know and you know it that's what i get all the time is those kind of things it's like you need to explain it a little bit more or refresh people's memories because just because you're an author and you know it so intimately it doesn't mean everybody else does and so i'm like oh yeah okay fine <laughs> Oh, no, but yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that's that's where I'm at. But I'm hoping next year, early next year, probably first quarter or so would be my plan. Um, because like I said, it's it's or at least get it to beta readers. And um, and I've got I've got here's the funny thing about my, my side alpha sequel. I've started that book three times now and I keep having to scrap it. <laughs> <laughs> go to like go to dips because I, I i find that the story just doesn't jive with me so mm, it's uh it's one of the burdens of of writing a story and then finding out that people actually liked it you're like well now i've got to do i've actually got to write another story right so. <laughs> they hold you accountable but then it's getting a little nerve-wracking because you want yes. to do your characters justice and the story justice and all that kind of stuff so i get that i get that and uh, yeah, I had, I was working on a project earlier. It was a six book, uh, first draft of a six book of a series. And it was such a struggle, such a struggle that finally I had to like say, okay, I'm putting this to, to bed for a little bit. I'm gonna write a different project and I'll come back to it after with, you know, hopefully I may have to reapproach it differently. And like you said, you may have to scrap all that. I hope I don't want to scrap all of that, but, <laughs> but sometimes that's what you have to do in order for the book to be right, <laughs> to be the best it can be, because 
you don't want to force it. If you're forcing it too hard, I feel like something something's not right. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Well, and, and I think when I originally wrote Site Alpha, I kind of had a trilogy in mind, and the story that I wanted to tell in the second book. As I started to write it, I just realized that's not the right story. Like it, it didn't have the right focus. It was kind of on the wrong characters, and um, so I, I went back to the drawing board and was kind of happy. I got. I don't know, 20 or 30,000 words into another version of it. And even at that, I kind of got to a point where I was kind of hitting a wall and I said, I just, I still don't think this is it. And so I started over and now it, now it's, it is the right story. Finally, it's just, it took three tries. So. Sometimes third time's the charm. Sometimes it's the 10th, who knows, but hopefully it's only three for you. <laughs> Draw smart figures. I love that. But, okay, so you've been getting into short stories. That's exciting. Like, are you writing them for your own readership, for yourself? Are you trying to do submit them for publishing in various, you know, magazines? Like, what are you doing with your short stories? Because that's that's kind of it's fun. Very cool. So, first of all, let me give a real quick shout out to my writing group. It's called the Moorhead Friends Writing Group, and they're up in Minnesota. And they actually have published several anthologies now. I'm in two of them so far. Um, but, uh, and I'm actually, I like literally this morning before I got on here with you, I was working on my third short story to submit to them, uh, cause they're doing a, another, uh, anthology later this year. So I'm, 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 I'm going to have another short, short story coming out with them as well. But, um, but I, I, I kind of, before I had, when I mentioned that I had tried to write before, one of my ideas was that I kind of wrote. I don't want to call it an anthology because it wasn't exactly an anthology, but I wrote a bunch of short stories down. I actually put a bunch of them on my website after I had kind of gotten Site Alpha up and running and going. Um, and it was just like little things, you know, uh, personal experiences or different things like that. And I realized that I enjoy the concept of a short story because it's so concise, right? Like you, you write it, you turn it in, you get it edited, somebody else deals with the cover. <laughs> And it's like it's all done and so and it also gave me a chance to kind of branch out so i did i did one short story that was kind of like i mentioned paranormal ish uh, in nature i did one that really is like more of a traditional like horror style almost like a slasher style story that's that's one that's submitted but hasn't that anthology hasn't been uh published yet but it is in the process right now um i say submitted it was accepted and everything so it, it will be out eventually but um i did another one that's that was kind of um more like a, a like a, a period piece almost it like kind of happens in the 80s and is talking about the arcades and things like and it's so anyway it gave me a chance to kind of test some of these other waters maybe not in a quote unquote you know full book where i wasn't sure i'd have that but but to be able to have a, a short story and so i've really i've really gotten into the process and and i i'm pretty good at that now so <laughs> that's good because it is it's a very different thing to tell a complete story in a very succinct way than writing a novel or a novella and or a long series. I mean, they're very different approaches. And just because you're good at one doesn't necessarily mean you're good at the other at one. And I, uh, I, I'm i trying to do a short story at least a year. And for me, kind of like what you were saying, it's to challenge myself to maybe I wrote one that was in first person and um, when I'm usually a third person writer. Don't think I'll ever do that again. But it was a test, <laughs> uh, you know, and it, it allows you to try different genres or maybe different POVs or uh, shine a light on a side character that all your fans love, but you don't really have a way to fit it in the big story, you know, all that kind of stuff. So short stories can be great and anthologies can be fantastic for the cross promotion aspect between authors. So how many people are in your group? Because it sounds like it has to be pretty pretty substantial it's, if you're doing anthologies yeah it's, it's pretty big um i when i joined i think we were around 25 or 30 but we've we've expanded we're we're over 50 now for actual members not everybody submits um i think the last anthology had like 29 stories in it or something like that but um it's really cool because it's it's so many different types of storytellers right so you've got poets and you've got you know people that write nonfiction, and you've got folks that write romance and and for me it's helped me learn so much because even though i wrote a quote unquote you know uh, urban fantasy as far as like something that i put down i i don't really know how to delve into some of these other places but mm -hmm. these these authors are able to help me right so they can tell me hey this this particular thing doesn't quite work <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, when, or this, 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 this scene between these two characters is a little bit off. And so um, it's really been cool to get all these different knowledge bases. And some of them are, some of them already have their own books out as well. Some of them have several books out, in fact. Um, but, uh, but all of us kind of are just, we meet pretty regularly. We have like big, like, best-selling authors come and like talk to the group um our, our our kind of organizer chris he's really awesome at finding you know some pretty big names um uh usa today bestsellers and people like that to come and actually talk to the group and share their story of how they got their book to to you know publish and everything and so so it's been really cool it's been a big big help for me to, to grow as an author because i really started out doing it with i mean i had nothing i was <laughs> i had nothing <laughs> So this has helped immensely. <laughs> well, and that's that's what I think um, writers and authors should realize and be you know aware of building a community of other authors and writers, and not just one hundred percent focusing on the readership, but the other authors and writers can help you tremendously. And maybe it's finding a certain software that helps streamline your writing pro process, or maybe a critique partner or you know whatever it can be, but building that community, that support system, uh, for people, even if the basics is like they're just there to encourage you and be like, hey, have you have you written anything this month? No, you yep. should probably need <laughs> put a few words on paper. Let's see. Let's see where you go from there. It's great to build that kind of network. So that's fantastic that you found such a vibrant community. Well, and the other the other big thing for me as a as an indie author, I mean, again, you'll know this. One of the biggest struggles is getting your book in front of other readers, right? Or getting your book in front of a, you know, into bookstores or whatever. And they've done a fantastic job. It's, it's the first time I ever got to be in a Barnes and Noble is because of this group, right? You know, like, like my, my book sells really well. It's weird. I, I sell probably more books in Minnesota and North Dakota than I do anywhere else. It's like, they're constantly, I'm sending books up to them. So, um, so it's really neat. And it's, it's given me an opportunity to reach an audience that I would never have been able to reach just probably on my own um and so through them and we've got we've got authors all over the country but their kind of core is up there in uh in minnesota and north dakota south dakota and so that's where a lot of the focus is and it's been really cool to to just get feedback and and hear about you know they're like oh somebody came by and they really wanted to get your book and they'd seen it in the library and this is like oh, it's awesome so. <laughs> you okay um I'm trying to remember if i can recall but your first book isn't it based out of those areas too like so it's in Arizona. Uh, is where the first one takes Sorry. place. No, you're okay. But I, I, I grew up in Idaho, so it's you know I I know a lot about that area. You know the Midwest and things like that. My, my we've been up through there. My family and I have have gone through those areas a lot. And so um, so yeah, it, you know the, the first one was Arizona. I actually do include much more of the United States in the sequel. I can tell you that. That's a, a little little hint as to. There are a lot of cryptids all over the U.S. Yes. to play with. Like once you can get into all that kind of stuff, so. Yes, there is. So, so very excited for that. So, but yeah, and then you know, like I said, I mean, I'm here in the South. Uh, you know, the American Southeast, and so, you know, down here it's easy if I wanted to go do a signing or things like that. But it's very, very uncommon that I get to, like I said, get too far afield just because there's a lot of cost associated with that and a lot of time, you know. And so having these groups, you know, we've got somebody in Kansas City and we've got somebody in Arizona, we got somebody in uh, Florida and Michigan and all these places. And so it's like even they're out there ch and we champion each, each other's books. Right. So it's okay. if I go to the library to submit a couple of books, I'll submit some of their books, you know, and be like, hey, do you so. Um, so it's really it's really been fun to, to have that opportunity to to see our network grow, but also to, like I said, kind of feed off each other's experiences. So. And for anybody who's watching now or rewatches this when I repost this, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully on YouTube, um, that's one thing anybody can do to support authors for free is if an author is distributing what they say wide and it's not exclusive on Amazon, there's a good chance that if you go to a library and just request a book to be there physically, they'll get it in. And you know, you may have already read the book five times. That's great, but at least you've you've requested it, and now it's at your library, and other people can discover it. So that's something for free you can do to help and support authors, especially those who are um, wide. And I'm hoping to take my books wide. Uh, I was hoping to finish it this year, but it's there's been a lot of odd things that have like bumps in the road. So 
but it's still going on. I'm going to hopefully get my books wide and available so that if people wanted to request them at libraries, they could. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, I think I've got uh, I think I've got three of your books on my Kindle right now that are, are still in my to be read pile. I apologize, but I do at least have them. So. <laughs> Okay. You know what? That's the funny thing is the two, uh, yeah, the TBR, the to be read piles. I was, I talked on Friday with another author and I was just like, it's, it's not a pile now. We were talking about a skyscraper between the physical ones I have and mounds around my house. Some have made it onto shelves, uh, or the ones that are on my wish lists that I know I need to get. It, it takes a while. If you're like me, I'm a very slow reader. I mean, well, I wish I could read, you know, a book a day as some people seem to be able to. I do not. No. <laughs> it takes me so, so long. And that's one of the reasons why, unfortunately, I can't serve as anybody's arc reader because it takes me so long. I'll never get it done <laughs> in time. <laughs> it will eventually get, get done, but never get done in time. I've just, I, I've realized that is a weak, not a weakness, uh, not a skill for me. <laughs> I'm a slow reader. I understand. I understand. Well, that's one of the other challenges is that, you know, because we've got this writing group and, and just friends on TikTok and things like that, I'll get a lot of people say, hey, can I send you a chapter? Can I send you that? I'm like, absolutely. Just please understand it might take me a week to get your, you know, to get your chapter read, but I will be happy to read because I love, I love reading new stories. I love seeing the way that people take their characters and just do things that I would never have thought of. And it's like, oh, that is so, you know, so. <laughs> that is cool. Now, do you do a lot of in-face um, events? Because that's something that I'm picking up more and more again. I used to do it like before COVID a little bit here and there, but now I'm trying to actually really get into that mode. So I don't know, do you do a lot of face-to-face? -face? Are you still, you know, on, on the socials and... It's very sporadic. More, I do definitely do more stuff on social media than probably I do in person. Um, you know, one of the tricks is that when I first, you know, when I got my first book out, I was like, I was all over the place. Kind of like you talk, you know, like it was like, man, anytime I could get anybody a book signing of this, you know, an appearance, it didn't even, you know, I, I set up at, at uh, haunted attractions. I mean, I didn't went to anything, you know. And um, then it's kind of been like since it's been a couple of years and it's kind of like, eh, you don't feel like there's quite as much, you know, energy about that first book. So I've, I've kind of taken this year and kind of chilled a little bit, but I, I do feel like once I get a couple more books out, then I'll probably have to do that again because it's just there's nothing quite like actually getting to interact with people live. I love doing stuff online, but uh, to, to be able to sit there and talk to folks and, and you know, really find out a their story and b you know, their excitement about stories in general and what they like and stuff. It, it can't be beat. So <laughs> that's true. It is true. There is that kind of energy when you're talking to someone live and uh, it's it's just a fun thing to kind of I wouldn't say feed off each other, but, you know, it just feels really kind of neat being able to engage with someone in that uh, in the real world. <laughs> yeah. Not just the virtual world, which is a variation of the real world. <laughs> But actually, fun thing is one of the upcoming events I'm going to is Dragon Con in Atlanta. And I just went through because they recently released all their panels and all, you know, all the events. So you can kind of go and, you know, make your plan and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, I have to go to the panels that I'm actually going to be on. But I was going through them and there was for sure one, if not two, that were just about crypto cryptids. And I was just like, ah. I feel like Neil would appreciate this one. <laughs> yeah, well, so true story. I really wanted to go to Dragon Con this year, and it just did not work out. It was not in the cards for me this year. But absolutely, it is on my like bucket list. Like I want to go. Um, I I just it just has not been something I had a chance to do since I've been an author. But um, but yeah, I really want to go. I see the stuff like you get to do, and I know that uh, Jason and I can't remember Jason's last day, but I know he yeah. was there last year, and I suspect he's here this year again too. Oh yeah, uh, we're we're both on the book talk panel uh, yeah. this year, and which I'm is the just one awesome. Moderating that one this year. Sorry, my light's going down. So, but yeah, so there's there is really cool and like you know, it, that's the fun thing is being able to go. To another fun thing. There's a lot of fun things going to conventions, uh, but one of the fun things is being able to meet people that you have met virtually or gotten to you know get to know on online and all across the world and then being able to like see them face to face you're like you do exist <laughs> you are a real person <laughs> i mean clearly you are but it's really kind of cool to be like now i can talk to you face to face and 
let's let's pause for a for a little uh, book talk post together and <laughs> yes i i would that would be that would be like i said that's that's on my bucket list because it's 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 cool when you get to be with even just a couple other authors because i've done a few events like that where it's been you know local authors to the area and we all kind of spring together to get a booth or something like that and it's like just even being able to, to, to talk to them in person. Like you said, it's really cool to talk like this or to, to go on podcasts or whatever, but but to have folks like right there and to be able to to see and hold their books and be like, man, you know, that's just oh, yeah. so much book cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love book swapping. I'll be like, I'll sign a book for you if you sign a book for me. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Add it to my collection. <laughs> oh man, fun stuff. Definitely fun stuff. So, okay, so what is your next game plan obviously you have the fantasy you're working on gonna get some cover design and move that one forward um what else do you are you trying to accomplish this year because we're over halfway through and i am not ready (laughs) so my big my big still to come event this year is site alpha audiobook so i do have the the audiobook is recorded it has been edited I believe it has been submitted. I got to talk to my uh, my uh, vocal or my uh, my whatever they call those <laughs> the voice talent. Anyway, the um, the uh, narrator. But um, I got to talk to them and just confirm. But I think everything's been loaded up. We're going through the process of waiting for the approvals at this nice. point. So I am really excited um, for that because that's been that's been something that I've been trying to get you know for basically the last two years is is get that process you know. And again, for those of you who don't know, uh, audiobooks are are not cheap. They're not you know super expensive, but they're definitely you know you, there's some cost associated with that, and and a, a well deserved cost for that matter. But anyway, it's just uh, one of those things. But yeah, so it is done though, and uh, now we're just waiting for to get the announcement for the official release date, and that's kind of my my that and this horror anthology that I'm in should be out by October, and so before before the Halloween, that was the goal, and then the uh morehead friends writing group has their first sequel anthology it's actually an it's a sequel to one of their other anthologies so they did a, an anthology called welcome to fm falls that was basically all short stories about a fictional little town that that some of it's paranormal and some of it's kind of just kooky and some of it's just pretty straightforward you know it's and so now we're doing a return to fm falls we're actually going to return to the because that that book did really really well um they sold a lot of copies of that one, and so they're, they we're excited to kind of go back and, and share some new stories from from parts of town we didn't get to cover yet. So ah, I love that. That's a cute way of doing anthology because um, I'm sure there there are a couple that don't really have a theme, but more often than not, they have you know some kind of reason why you're bundling all these stories together. And I like that. That is really neat. Hi, and uh, no, that's gonna be fun, exciting, and. Re- October, perfect month for the yes. horror one too. So that's yeah. kind of cool. You have like a lot of projects going on right now. There's there's a lot of irons in the fire, but um, but like I said so that's that's my current year. Next year, obviously the uh, the the fantasy book is is kind of front and center, but um also like I said with with FM or not FM Falls easily sorry Side Alpha Side Alpha's follow up book. I'm actually I think I've got a name picked out for it. I think I've got pretty much everything going good. I'm about. 25,000 words in on it now. And so it's still got a ways to go, but at least I know, like I said, at least I know the, the way it's flowing finally and, and all the, all the things match up. And I actually, I actually gave that. So my daughter's kind of my very first kind of line of defense when it comes to, yes. <laughs> to, to, to reading books. And she, she read it over the summer. She's like, yeah, this is the direction you need to go down. I was like, okay, okay. This is this one, this one works. So, <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> it, it really is true. Going back to the whole thing about, um, when projects are going smoothly it's it's not just a struggle when they don't but it's a it's it's a time suck it will you know it just takes that much longer and if you're beating your head on a project and yeah if once you get it and it you know it's right you know you're heading in the right direction that's when things <laughs> pick up it really starts cooking then so yeah that's yeah that's that's why I'm excited. <laughs> now, now going back to the basics. Now, do you like to write more towards the beginning of the day, end of the day, weekends? I don't know. Like, where is your most your that's best a good time to be creative? 
You know, when I when I wrote Site Alpha, I almost exclusively wrote at night. Um, and that was kind of just because of the way things shook out for our family. Like I still had kids in school. I still had, you know, some things going on. So it was like at night when everybody went to bed, I would just go and write and spend, you know, however long until I just got tired and said, OK, that's that's the end of it. Um, since then, I am much more apt to write kind of in the in the afternoon ish. Like I don't like writing close to bedtime anymore, if that makes sense. You know, um, I, usually if I if I get home, I'm done with work or whatever. You know, have have a little bit of dinner and this like boom, I'm going to go and spend a couple hours just getting some words down on the page, and that has worked a lot better for me. <laughs> That's good. Because I. Everybody has their strong suit. Some people are like first thing in the morning, you know, while everybody else is still asleep and other people, you know, or after they put their kids to bed at night and you, you do what you need to do, especially if you're a, a younger author and not a non full time author, you do what you have to do. But there's definitely a time of day that fits each person better than others. And I'm a morning person, not first, first, first thing, but pretty early, like I can get on and that's my, my creativity period is, or I'm a morning person. So well, you know, what's funny is that for me, a, a lot of my inspiration comes in those moments when there's nothing else going on, right? So like if I'm mowing the lawn or something, you know, I'll, I'll be using something that has nothing to do with writing. And that's when like something will hit me. And so a lot of times my commute home, I get like 25 minutes and it's just me and the radio mm -hmm. and I'll have, oh, hey, this idea hits me. You know what I'm saying? So then when I get home, it's like, okay, I got that idea. It's, it's cooking. Let's, let's, you know, so as soon as I eat a little something or whatever, I'm like, boom, I'm hitting the, I'm in the keyboard. So so that's kind of been the way that it's worked for me, at least the last year or so. so. <laughs> that's great. And it's also, I, I've, I just started doing this uh, new world building thing with my husband. So we're co world building together. And that's been very different because he's not a writer. He's not going to, you know, I have the final say of things, but it's, it was an idea that he came up with essentially and threw it past me. And then I tossed it back to him saying, have you thought of this? And we started going back and forth. We're like, Oh, this is something this is fun and so kind of towards the evenings you will go and take a little time be like let's go back to our world and let's let's see what we're are we dealing with the politics political structure are we doing with you know some other kind of social thing or the magic system and it's just it's kind of fun to have someone um, to toss ideas back and forth though i don't know if i could ever truly co-write a story with someone i am a control freak i've said this before and uh that might be a little too hard <laughs> I, th that's really cool. I mean, that's really awesome. I we used to have, when I when I was writing Inside Alpha, my daughters and I would have what we call big brain meetings, where we would just sit down. and I'd be like, "Well, here's this direction I wanted to go with this." And they'd be like, "Nah, that doesn't make any sense, Dad." I'd be like, "Okay." So it's <laughs> like that's really cool, and you can collaborate even if you're not co-authoring, like you said. Yes. It's yes. But to, but to have somebody there that kind of bounces ideas off of, and that's really that's really neat. Like world building is is big, especially in the the style of book that you write. I mean, it's, you know, there's so much world building to do. So that's awesome that you guys can collaborate like that and, and talk we'll those things through. We'll see how long it lasts, but right now we're doing okay. <laughs> New project, each day could be different. Tomorrow we'll be like, nope, and we butt heads now. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good thing because when you have someone to throw back and forth ideas, be it again, a critique partner or, you know, a close friend or anything that, they're unafraid to be like, okay, here's a hole. Have you thought about this hole? Or here's an idea. And then you have to be like, no, it doesn't exactly fit. But what if we reapproached it this way? You know, it is because your mind wants to think a certain way and then someone else thinks a little differently. And when you put it together, you're like, huh, this is new. This is different. <laughs> <It's> intriguing. <laughs> I love we have a question in the chat I see here. <laughs> So it looks like I, or the question is, do either of you use free form? I am unfamiliar with that. So I'm going to say no on my end. I'm going to, I'm going to guess. I'm not sure. Is that, is that a writing software or an editing software? To figure out. Does this say? You can clarify if this is so, uh, software or if you're talking about just. The way we write. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's gonna say. Those are two different things, but they're always new software that people talk about and that's that I don't know or I'm unaware of. I'm like, huh, nope, didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> okay, kind of stream of consciousness style of writing. Well, I'll let you go first. Uh, <laughs> what do you, what do you do? <laughs> it varies depending on book and series for me. I, I have one type of writing that I do that are retellings. And so essentially 
the plot line's already there. I'm just retelling it. Um, I like to take obscure myth and bring it back to light. And I like to deep dive and the culture and the belief systems of the people, especially the, of the cultures that um, went along hand in hand with that said mythology or myth or legend. But uh, that one, I don't really have to do a lot of stream of consciousness kind of things because it's already there. Uh, case in point, my Viking Dark Fantasy series, Guardian Speaker. Um, but the other ones that I create just purely out of my imagination, I, I do take a lot of time where I will be obsessed about it. And so anytime I'm like, I could be washing dishes, vacuuming, <laughs> taking the dog out, but my mind keeps going back to it and thinking about it and going over and over. And I slowly develop um, the ideas, I guess, kind of like stream of consciousness, though I'm not sitting down and typing it all down at that moment. I usually come back to that, but I'll hash out stuff for a while and come back and tweak and then try to organize and break apart. So I have uh, pseudo, not really spreadsheets, but um, definitely uh, pages and pages and pages of notes and details and where, however my mind's trying to organize it for that particular project, that's how I do it. But it's not really true stream of consciousness writing. I do kind of come in with some kind of game plan when I'm ready to sit down and work on the plot. How about you, Neil? Gotcha. Well, I, I also mentioned real quick, Trilogy Books asked about what software do we use. Um, I personally just use regular old Word. Like, I don't even do any special, like, when I do format. I format in Word, too. So um, that's just me. But um, I I have learned to call myself a planter, like a planning pantser, I guess. is maybe the way to put it. Um, Plant the seed and let it grow is what I've heard a lot of people say. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> I very much, I, I really don't, I mean, people, I've, I've talked to other authors about this. I really don't sit down with a quote unquote plan, but I always have like scenes that like, as I'm kind of figuring out a book, like a, a plot, I'll kind of go, okay, well, I know this scene I want to happen. Like, um, just for example, inside Alpha, there was a scene, I knew I wanted to have a scene where they go and meet the big, the, the Sasquatches on their territory, essentially, right? Like meet them at their, at their place versus, and it was like, okay, so I want to have that scene, but where's it going to happen? Well, I don't know. It it might happen halfway, you know, I might be writing a totally different chapter and all of a sudden I go, oh, wait, I remember I wanted to do that scene. Let's get it, you know, shoehorned in here or whatever. Um, but but a lot of times, a lot of times it's kind of like I'll start writing and an idea will come to me as I'm writing and I'll go, oh, this character, based on what I've started to learn about them after having written 20 paragraphs <laughs> under their point of view, I start going, oh, I think they would actually make this other decision than what I had originally kind of you know, proctored for them or whatever. So, um, so a lot of things change. Um, Side Alpha, if you were to read a, a like the the very first draft version of it versus the version that was published, they're not exactly completely different, but they're really different. <laughs> There's a lot of different stuff in there. So, actually, that brings me back for something for you in a moment, Neil. But uh, to answer trilogy books, yeah, I also use Word at the moment. Um, to do my writing and even um, the formatter who helps me use his word that way. But I have purchased the software Atticus where what I'm hoping to do is because I'm comfortable writing in Word, write the paragraph, upload it. And that one um, I think has a little bit of editing software and a little bit of different um, formatting software as well to kind of play around with and see if I find any benefit from using that one. I haven't got into it yet but I do, I did buy the software. It's on my computer. Um, and I just now have to find some time to figure out what all it's capable of. <laughs> so I unfortunately can't help you much more than I write word. <laughs> <laughs> and then I see a comment saying, I imagine the first person account where things develop upon the moment. Yeah. For, uh, I get you. I get you. Now, going back to what I was thinking about what you were saying, uh, Neil, about how drastic certain people, the way they write and edit their stories and things can evolve dramatically. My style of writing, usually the first draft almost identical to the final project, but it takes me a long time to write. You know, I'm not a speed writer either, but it's because I'm really hashing it out as I go. Now, there are other people kind of like what you were saying, Neil, that the first draft and the final one can be dramatically different. Have you ever heard of the platform Ream so far? No, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, because I was saying, like, if you're building a readership and especially readership who is interested in the whole process, a lot of people put, you know, I, I mean, I would 
write it, copyright it, and then do this, but they'll write the, a chapter, upload it, and let their people who are, because it's a kind of a Patreon like, but it's by writers um, and readers for writers and readers. And that one, um, then people can follow your process and they kind of pay for the behind the scenes sneak peeks because, you know, especially for the ones who write and edit dramatically, they'll, a lot of people who use it will have readers get all the first draft copies through, you know, a chapter a week or whatever, however fast people write. Yeah. And then they'll go back and buy the finished book because they want to know what was kept, what was not. And, you know, you, it's just, it was just kind of a cool platform that it's another one of those things I want to look into. I haven't found time yet. <laughs> Hold on. You said the name was Reem? Is that? R-E-A-M. Reem. Okay. I am definitely going to investigate this because that is, it was funny because I, um, way back when I was, when I was, when I had first gotten the, uh, signed to the indie, uh, indie publisher, they were like sending out betas, but they said something to me essentially that they were like, well, you know, we're going to send it to the X number of betas, but if you've got people that you know that you wanted to send to, that's okay. We're kind of, you know, we release you to allow you to do that kind of thing. And so I had given copies of my book to just a couple people that I knew were readers, but weren't like super connected to me, right? Like one of my daughter's friends at school and a person that I worked with, but I didn't like, they weren't in my office kind of thing. So like we didn't have to see each other every single day. And like, it was funny because to hear them talk about after having read the final version of the book, even mm -hmm. though they read a like a really pre, you know, and they were like, oh, I really, I, you know, I wish you had kept X. Or they were like, oh, I, I can't believe what you did with Y because it was, you know, so much better than the way I read it the first time. And it's like, that's a really cool idea because I would almost pay for that with some authors. Like, I would almost be like, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> so yeah, that's really and interesting. Like Patreon, um, there's some authors who, who who use it and love it and they'll talk about all the cool things they do but like like patreon you can come up with levels so you could have you know whatever five dollars a month and you get first drafts and everything and then the next level well if i have character art you get the digital copies when you get them quarterly and the next level you can help make a character the next level you are part of you know whatever or you get special digital boxes or you know you can make it however you want and but it's another way that authors potentially can get an income stream and develop close relationships with uh, super fans and uh, maybe even get some feedback early on, kind of like the alpha reader stage, if you like that. So sounds really promising. I haven't checked it out, but I have, I know there are definitely some uh, authors, especially on this platform, Book Talk, that will talk about it till their faces are blue because they love it. That's, that's really, I, it is on, I literally, like I said, I pulled a pen out to make sure I could write this down. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was like, I always now keep, I always try to keep some kind of notes because I feel like that's a, a great thing about, you know, having these face-to-faces, be it author to author, author to reader or whatever, because I always learn something at every one of these. So I'm like, I need to remember <laughs> my short sheet. <laughs> I want to not forget, now I have the problem of the pile of 52,000 little post-it notes stuck in a thing. I have to go back through them at some point so I can look at the notes I took. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. Oh, man. Anywho, okay, so let me let me ask some of the questions that I always like to ask because the hour is starting to speed by and just make sure I cover them again in the off chance that I'm able to repurpose this on YouTube. A lot of times this platform is nice. Sometimes it's been a little snarly and has allowed me to do it. But first and foremost, where can people get your book right now? Like, again, I mean, I'm pretty sure we covered this, but is it wide? Where, you know, do you sell direct? Do you get, you know, how, how should people come and support you the best? Where can they find it, et cetera? So, I mean, absolutely. You can actually go to my, my, my name is the website, neilromrell.com. You can find my book there, a uh, hardcover, you know, uh, paperback. I will sign them the whole nine yards. Um, but you can also get it through Amazon. Sometimes it's a little bit cheaper there. I'll be honest, but you know, it's, uh, it's also Amazon, but you know, um, or again, like you mentioned before, it is wide on Ingram Spark and everywhere else. So it, it can be, a local bookstore, libraries, people like that can can request it. Um, but again, the easiest way to get it is usually either through me or through through Amazon. Um, so, and then the anthologies are all either available through the Morehead Friends Writing Group or also Barnes and Noble, and I don't remember all the other places they sell their books. But anyway, 
<laughs> but yeah, so those, just just look me up on uh, Amazon and you'll find me and the anthologies I'm part of as well. So. And are are your anthologies um, on your website? So if people find you know, do you have anything to link to people over and say, hey, if you want one of my stories? Yes, yes. If you go to my website, you'll find a link. I know for the FM Falls one for sure, and I think the Tales from the Water is also on there. Um, but and like I said, if you go and find my page on Amazon, I'm there, or on my Goodreads page. All those places you can find my books. So. Perfect. <laughs> And then kind of going hand to hand with that one is uh, where outside of book talk and now your website can people find and follow you like do you have a website do you are you on other socials or are you pretty much sticking with those two right now well you can find me just about anywhere again my name is pretty much i'm the only one that i know of so uh if you find me on twitter you find me oh actually on twitter i'm weird i'm backwards on x twitter whatever they call that it's rom Neil neil instead of neil Rommel. anyway but um you can also find me a little fun thing that I do that is not technically author related is I uh, host a uh, YouTube show called Bad Movie Cold Cereal Party. So this is a a place where we watch bad movies, we eat cold cereal. It's a little bit of a goofy thing that I did when I was a child. Um, a cousin of mine actually came up with the idea of like renting the worst, dumbest movies we could find and everybody brings cold cereal and have a party. So we do that now on YouTube. So you can find the bad movie called Cereal Party on YouTube. Uh, we publish videos pretty much constantly, but we do lives every two weeks. So well, we... okay. So then I got one for you because I love, oh, I have so many. I actually really love uh, terrible B movies. <laughs> I have a number I could recommend, but one I watched recently that you might get a kick out of, especially if you, um, so there's a animated show, the Harley Quinn show, yes. and they have, um, on one of the seasons they had a character called Swamp Thing and never seen it before. Yes. I didn't really realize that that was actually a DC character yep. and they have a movie from the seventies called Swamp Thing, and yes, if you do. haven't seen it. <laughs> it is not a good movie, you're right. <laughs> I, I just watched that one. I think there's even a sequel, which I have not seen yet, but. Yeah, I haven't seen the sequel. Um, and yeah, when I was a kid, I kind of remember thinking it was like the creature from the Black Lagoon. I don't think yeah. I realized they were separate. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Swamp Thing. There was also a TV series at one time, Swamp yeah. Thing, but I think that got kind of erased. I don't I don't think it's around anymore. <laughs> we don't talk about Swamp Thing. Poor Swamp Thing. Anyhow, <laughs> I just thought I was like thought you might get a kick out of that one if you hadn't seen that one. That was one of my latest B movie ones. But uh there's some great ones out there. Great oh, if you're man. ready for terrible movies. One of my favorites, the the, the my fa the the B the B slash bad movie that got me kicked off originally was Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. If you've ever seen that one, it is really bad it's an old 70s or something and then there's a movie called the stuff and i swear when you see the stuff it looks like it was a movie that was made for tv it wasn't and it's got all kinds of people that were actually like kind of big name stars at one point or another in their careers but it's just such a weird movie it's so weird well, so. <laughs> another one that you might want to and then we'll go back to books on, put on like, I know. <laughs> um, when i was living in the new orleans area there's the big lake um on top of new orleans called lake pacha train so when we discovered this movie we're like we have to watch it because it's called the day of the dolphin okay and it's another one of these 70s ones and the concept is in lake pacha train mind you a lake a brackish lake but lake lake poncha train a group of people train dolphins to take out the current president Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> perfect I, that sounds awesome i'm definitely adding that to our weird, list weird 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 movie but <laughs> definitely be movie and i had to watch it because i was like i swim in that lake <laughs> Who do? Anyhow, uh, fun stuff, fun stuff. But yeah, okay. Also, third question, oh, third of my three that I always try to ask every time, and this goes for anybody else who's still listening after that movie ramble. <laughs> if there's any questions that you have for us or any topics you would like us to cover that we haven't, let us know in the comments. And the same thing goes for you, Neil. If there's any questions you have, topics you wanted to cover, announcements you wanted to make, this is the time. Well. So I was going to say, first and foremost, you're going to Dragon Con, which is awesome. So what new, what new stuff do you have coming at the end of the year? I'm excited. I like I love keeping up with other authors. So what are you doing? Well, <laughs> release wise, I had an audiobook release last week. It just the way uh, that plat uh, 
I, I release them all based on the timing of ACX. And so I'm taking my audiobooks now wide for many of them, but I'm again, moving in that direction wide, but I have to wait till ACX releases it. And I never know what day that is. And then I'm like, okay, go time. So last week was go time for the, my latest audiobook, And that was the seventh one of my Viking dark fantasy series, the guardian speaker. And ironic, maybe not ironically, but tomorrow I release the 14th one of that series because I'm hoping to wrap it up this year and there are 16 in all. So that means one this month, maybe one next month and one after that. And then I'm done with the series. I will be wow. just maybe doing some, I'm hoping once it's done, maybe next year. Um, obviously I bundle them in groups of four for the printed uh, omnibus versions, but also it would be kind of fun because I love the book covers when they're all together. They're, they are very stunning when they're together, but by themselves are a little flat. I've retrospectively realized this. So I don't know if I want to do like a special edition series of covers or something fun for that. That would be for next year and have them uh, just a little more oomph to the covers. But yeah, this year publishing wise would be wrapping up my goals, wrap up that series for the eBooks and um, maybe even release that last final omnibus of that series this year. But for events, Dragon Con during Labor Day weekend, in the middle of October, there's Multiverse Con also in the Atlanta area. Um, a little small one. I think this is their third year and it'll be my first time ever going. So I'm excited about that. I've heard it's really charming <laughs> and a lot of fun. And uh, then I'll be going to Author Nation in Vegas in November. And that one's for me to learn, not for me to be a panelist or a bookseller or anything. So that one's just purely for me to learn and uh, hang out with. be an attendee. I'm an attendee. Oh, that's and, uh, awesome though, congratulations. That's amazing. Have you been to Vegas before? Last year for um, what has now been rebranded as Author Nation, it was 20 books to 50K. Okay. Um, conference and so I, that was the only time and I, I don't think I ever left the hotel because the book community was always doing something at all hours and I have a serious case of FOMO when I'm with people I'm an extreme extrovert so if someone's like hey do you want to go and do karaoke and I don't do karaoke but I will support you doing karaoke and I'll say okay I'm going to do karaoke with the keynote speaker and uh, Adam Beswick and all these other, you know, names in the author community. That's like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> and, and if you ever want to get a good education, I, I know this one's in rebranding year, so I'm hoping uh, they kept, you know, all the good stuff of that con convention. But uh, Author Nation would be something to check out because it has everything from the drafting, you know, 101 side and really does deep dives in various kinds of marketing and advertising and Kickstarters and Patreon and how to, you know, be a successful seven figure author. And yes, there are seven figure authors that go there. It is wild. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. That's that's amazing. There's always things to do. And that's the thing about being an author, be it indie or traditional. There's so much stuff to learn, so many people to meet. It's, it's just fun. So many things to write. <laughs> Very true. Very true. So let me ask you, because this one, this one, this is the question I've been asking any author between now and Dragon Con. And the reason being is one of the panels I'm going to be on uh, is I think there are seven authors on it. And we are requested to embody and or cosplay one of our book characters. And then it's going to be an interactive dating game between all these book authors, book characters. So I'm going to be, I, I had uh, my readers vote on who they wanted to see me cosplay as, and now I'm putting the costume together. And I'm going to be um, one of my, uh, well, I haven't announced which one actually, so I can't really say, but I'm going to be one of my characters. Anywho, who, if you could cosplay of any of your book characters or since you, you know, are still new to the writing, any book character, who would you cosplay as? Who would I cosplay as? Well, pro honestly, so the, um, I wrote it, the, my very first short story that I got published, uh, 
after having gotten out was uh, uh, one called The Top Prize. And it's essentially about this kid who goes to this kind of haunted arcade is, is what goes on there, basically. And mm-hmm. and so the guy that runs that place, Art, I would probably be Art. Like, Art's just kind of this weird dude that kind of, he has, you know, he runs the arcade, but he's he's always kind of like, he's one of those people that, like, you say something, all of a sudden he's behind your shoulder kind of thing. Like, he just, he just kind of always is there at the, at the perfect moment to, to make a quip or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. that would probably be closest to, like, what I am as far as, like, a guy that, you know, probably, you know, plays a lot of video games and knows a lot about things like that. So. Love it. That one, I could probably cosplay that fairly easily and be, feel pretty safe about it. So. And okay, so also actually, similar idea, a little different. Since you do, you do, you did mention that you are a, a player of D and D. If you had to create a D and D character based off one of your book characters, who, which character would you choose? So then you could play. In oh. A Oh, probably Charlotte. I mean, the the main character from Side Alpha. You know, she's she's flawed. She is. She's just a. You know, I mean, she's she's not like a superhuman or anything like that. But she she definitely has gone through some struggles and learned and grown. And I think she would just make a really cool like monk or somebody like that, like in D and D, like somebody who's kind of like self referential a little bit and thinks you know, okay, like really thinks out when they have to get into a fight. Why are they doing this and stuff like that? I think she would be really fun to have a character based on that. Uh, if I had to make a D and D character off of one of my characters, so. I love that that is fun. Hey, I I am totally adamant. I I will admit. I don't play D and D nearly as much as my husband, but I like the concept. I think the the lore of the D and D world system um, is really fascinating, and I do think there's a huge overlap for writers and especially fantasy fiction sci fi writers and D and D. And I think it would be so entertaining. I keep saying this for anybody I know. So entertaining for someone, not me. Please don't make me have to do this. <laughs> to get a bunch of authors together to play their characters in a live stream campaign so all the readers can watch a bunch of authors play their book characters in some D setting <laughs> that would be really cool that would be really cool i agree with that i wholeheartedly support it but i'm kind of of the same notion <laughs> don't make me do it just yet i got a lot of other stuff going on but <laughs> i would love fun. to watch that <laughs> Too many projects, too many ideas. I would totally do my best to come out and support and even play. But, uh, but yeah, I just... <laughs> Whoever has the energy and the wherewithal and the uh, DMing skills, uh, go for it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, Neil, thank you so much for hanging out with me the, today. It's, it's been so nice to catch up with you because it's been oh, too long. It has been way too long. I'm sorry. You know, there are... All- <laughs> fantastically huge number of people on book talk and i know that you i want to thank you a number one kathy you support authors so much across everything that you do and i know even if i can't like stay around i'll at least try to tune in every once in a while when i get to see your lives pop up sometimes i'm at work so i'm kind of being secret behind the desk, like you know doing this thing but <laughs> But no, I, I certainly, I truly do appreciate it. And opportunities like this are just, they mean the world to me. Um, it's really cool to just get to connect with folks. And yeah, catching up is great. And listen, I'm telling you, one of these years, I'm going to meet you at Dragon Con. That's all there is to it. I'm coming to Dragon Con one of these years. And we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that that author selfie, selfie we were talking about. So. Yes, yes. And that's one of those things. It's like, depending on, because I don't remember exactly if you're in Georgia, you said the Southeast, so I don't remember what state you're from. But <laughs> You know, check for the local ones because travel is expensive. I understand that, but that's why I'm doing some of the ones that are in my backyard because it's easier for me. But it's so cool meeting the authors that start that are in the con bracket because they do it often, and then you start developing different kind of friendships just going to those events. And so, see what's around you. You you know, you'd be surprised, and you know, never know. Just so just apply and say maybe I'll be a panelist. And there you go. There I you know. go. Never know. No, that's <laughs> awesome. Okay, everyone. Thank you for chiming in today. And I will have to run, but I appreciate it again, Neil. And I'll let you know if this platform's nice and I'm able to repurpose this in a few weeks. But everybody else, thank you for listening and follow him. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I follow her. laughs> thank you, though. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>